the uh, Bear uh, River uh, Dam. Uh, you got uh, Taboo uh, Reservoir, Tiger uh, Creek uh, Powerhouse, uh, Electric Powerhouse, uh, Pardee, Comanche. <coughs> there was a uh, uh, years ago a proposal to put a middle bar uh, dam uh, and powerhouse in. Uh, we need more water availability at some point in the future and I'm all for being environmental but I'm not for uh, adopting uh, support for this. <coughs> Director Dean. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Don mentioned the term water prism and I think that this discussion can stay within the parameters of a water prism without even bringing up the environmental issues and argue, I think, for uh, considering the wild and scenic as a, as a, uh, a designation for the McCallamy. First of all, I would say all the rivers in the state of California are over allocated, and, and, and the McCallamy is absolutely no exception. Um, the fact that we have reservations for 20,000 acre feet doesn't preclude the fact that if we ever requested to use it, that we'd have that use. I think that uh, uh, there are many people who stand in front of us with regard to, to water use, and that 20,000 acre feet was a carrot that was held out there in some respects, I think, to uh, get us to cooperate and go along with, with some, uh, some decided water action back in the 50s and even earlier. Um, the other thing, too, is that, that with this 20,000 acre feet, as Don correctly points out, that's, that's a very difficult uh, uh, amount of water to impound. The cost, the cost would be prohibitive to build a storage facility on the McCullamy to address the 20,000 acre feet. And, and the other thing, too, is, of course, that's 20,000 acre feet of reservation for Calabrese County, not just CCWD. And um, we still would have to talk to some of our neighbors with regard to uh, being able to create storage if that's indeed what, what we intend doing. I, I would suggest that with that 20,000 acre feet, remember 20,000 acre feet um, represents, with today's current water math, approximately 40,000 households. And if that's indeed the case, we're talking about an additional 80 plus thousand people that would be, bene would be able to benefit from our water reservations on the McCollum if we indeed uh, did take advantage of those reservations. I would suggest that if we are looking to use that particular supply of water for the benefit of the west end of the county, and I totally agree with that, I think it's absolutely critical that we should perhaps consider uh, using, using some of that 20,000 acre feet as a negotiating point to uh, develop a uh, diversion out of Par D uh, in some sort of an agreement with uh, East Bay Mud. At least with that we'd have our diversion and we'd be able to minimally pump it over the hill and into the Valley Springs area for the proposed growth and development that will probably take place in that particular region. Um, remember too that that's about the only place where, where we would not incur significant energy costs to pump uh, water out of the colony would be at that point in Part D. Otherwise that canyon is so deep that whatever benefit that would come from the 20,000 acre feet would probably be eaten up by the cost of energy production, or energy cost to, uh, to bring that water to, uh, to use. Um, one, of the, one of the advantages of a wild and scenic, which I think we all need to be aware of, is the fact that, that uh, when that designation takes place, we'd still be entitled to a diversion out of, out of uh, the free-flowing free economy that's, that's being proposed for the, the wild and scenic. But it would preclude anybody else from coming in with a sweetheart deal with East Bay Mud or, or, or Stockton East or, or uh, any, any San Joaquin entity and put a reservoir on that river and take, once again, the water that, that begins in our county away from, um, away from Calaveras County for other benefits. The other thing we need to keep in mind is that we have a comparable amount of water on the Calaveras and we have a substantial amount of water on the Stanislaus. And if we're smart, we would spend our time and our energy developing the water resources on those two rivers, particularly the Calaveras, since it plays so, so critically into uh, to supporting not just the current use 
in the Valley Springs area, but also you know, future use when, when uh, uh, development may come back. And, and we have pretty much identified within this county that, that the Valley Springs area, and quite frankly, the, the Highway 12 corridor, is, is a, is a growth, fruit, uh, growth footprint that needs to be addressed. Um, the the Mokalami, at best, would most likely be an emergency uh, supply should, should, the Calaveras, should the Calaveras dry up. Um, we could also talk about possible basin transfers between the Stanislaus and the Calaveras, which would allow us to exercise a lot of the rights that we have on the, on the Stanislaus that we're not able to take care of. I think, I think worrying about the McCullumy is, I won't say that it's premature, I think we have to be aware of all of our rivers, but I think that the potential for economic development on the, on the McCullumy with the wild and scenic designation is much, much stronger than, than the water we're going to be getting out of it. And, you know, when you, when you factor in the cost of, of uh, the acre foot per foot, you know, uh, for a facility, um, there's lots of other low-hanging fruit we could save the same kind of money on and, and bring water resources into Calaveras County. We could work on, on dredging of some of our reservoirs. We could work on uh, uh, the groundwater recharge, which we know is going to be a critical issue in the, in the, in the, in the West Basin. And of course, you know, it's possible that some of the McCallum River water could be used for that, or if not that, then uh, use the Calaveras River water, which I think is a lesser quality water for recharge and, and utilize the McCallum for, uh, uh, for human consumption. But that would, of course, be dependent upon a diversion that might be coming out of the uh, uh, party reservoir, which is something that I think we really need to explore. Um, <coughs> the, the, Mitch mentioned the, the headwater stuff and, and the stuff revolving around the uh, uh, forestry practices. That's another area where I think we can, we can secure a water supply. If, if, if we're engaged with uh, uh, you know, managing the forest for, for water, which I think is, is probably the primary role given, given our future as far as, as uh, climate change and, and, climate, uh, climate change and, and uh, drought scenarios are concerned, I think that uh, we need to explore those before we worry about storage, storage in, in the McCallumy. I'm, I am, would be opposed to opposing the wild and scenic. Um, I'm not sure necessarily that we have to take a position, but I'm, I'm going into this long litany primarily because I think it's critically important when we make a decision or when we think about what the McCallumy can provide that we have to keep all of these different considerations in mind. And I do genuinely believe, in the interest of economic development in Calaveras County, our greatest strength will be on the McCullumy, not the Calaveras or the <coughs> Um There's uh, proposals out there to increase, um, increase the, uh, the number of, of uh, uh, trips that, that uh, are done with, with uh, you know, raft trips and things like that. I know there's the, uh, uh, the uh, McCullumy Costa Crest Trail, which is now completed through Pardee and East Bay Mudlands, and we'll be moving up along the uh, uh, McCallumy drainage up to, up to uh, the crest of the Sierra. So there's a lot of things that can be done if we take advantage of what's available to us. And I would worry less about storage on the McCallumy and worry more about our reservations and our requirements uh, for use on both the Calaveras and the Stanislaus. I think that's pretty much it. Sorry to take <coughs> so much time. No, thank you. I have a couple more comments. Okay, go ahead. Just a, just a couple things that have you know, that have gone through my area in the last, and I, I appreciate the information that was sent to me by the Conservancy and, and uh, others, because it did give me a chance to read down. Um, uh, I, I, I'm looking at the project area, and I, I just find it ironic that it's, you know, the project, you know, the eligible segment classifications, uh, they're, they're both below reservoirs, or, or they're, they're all below reservoirs. And I just find that uh, interesting, you know, and I know we've, we've talked about partnering with uh, raising uh, Lower Bear Reservoir as a potential thing that it would benefit not just us, but potentially uh, uh, Amador County, who is, who, uh, it has, a, a, you know, not as bad as Columbia County, but they're, they're very water rights poor. Uh, but uh, just a couple things on the economy. Uh, there isn't a person in the world that can tell me that the economy above uh, the Highway 49 bridge on the McCullumy is more valuable than the economy below uh, the Highway 49 bridge. We're talking about billions of dollars below the Highway 49 bridge and perhaps a million dollars above the Highway 49 bridge. Now, uh, Highway 49 above is Calvary County and it's important to us, that economy is important to us. 
the aesthetics, the river, the, the heritage, the history, all that's important to us. I don't think anybody on this panel is talking about building a reservoir up there. But what this says is that this bars new dams, reservoirs, diversions along the designated uh, sections. Now, you know, now diversions is something that you know we, we we've talked about. Uh, it it would if we wanted to expand some of our diversions or intakes within this system. I believe we'd be this would be another impediment of already significantly lengthy environmental review. I mean, the fact of the matter is there's nobody alive that would be alive in this room for the next project that happens on the McCullough River. We all know that to be true. Everybody in this room will be dead. Maybe Joel. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is we have to forecast into the future what could happen in this state. Climate change is changing uh, or certainly seems to be changing. Many of the things that Bob talked about uh, are significant concerns of mine. You know, redundancy. Uh, Hogan Reservoir right now has, has recovered a little bit. We're about 100,000 acre feet. Uh, <clears throat> after the end of this year, I don't know what our projection is going to be, but uh, if we don't see significant rainfall this spring, without question next year, we will be wondering or wishing that we had some redundancy off the McCullough River. Now, I don't know what that looks like. I can't tell you what the project is. You know? uh, but I think we can't sell the future of Calaveras County um, down the road for this wild and scenic designation. I think that in the state of California, the environmental regulations and rules regarding any sort of water project are so significant that to add another hurdle to it is detrimental to the future of our county. Certainly de detrimental to, to the people of the west end of the county that are likely beneficiaries of a, of a uh, emergency water supply, which we're, we may need next year. You know, we've got in that, in the, on the, in the uh, down the uh, Highway 12 side, we've got people who truck water, who drive trucks and, uh, and fill them up at our Jingman water treatment plant drive them back home and park them on a high spot in the lot, and that's how they, that's how they live their lives. Uh, what's their most likely source of water economically? I mean, there's really no good source, but, but the McCullough meeting is, is certainly uh, an option. Uh, so uh, that, that's just uh, uh, one of the things. I, 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 I wonder, too, uh, uh, you know, how does it... Uh, what does this change? The designation of wild and scenic. What does it change on the river? I mean, that, that's something I'm, I'm curious to get the answer. But what does it change from where it is right now and where it will likely be for the next 30 or 40 years? Uh, what's different? And all, the only thing I see it changes is, is that it makes it more restrictive to do anything which is referred to a disagency to do. I think all the other access, all those other things seem to stay the same. Uh, uh, so, uh, so with that, I mean, and, and then we get to the other project of you know, many of the people that support the wild and scenic designation. I guarantee you, are going to oppose Bob's dredging plan. Maybe. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't deny. It's entirely possible. So I mean, it's like where where are we with with with? Uh, I mean, how do we do anything? How do we actually, you know, uh, if 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 the regulations were in place that are in place today. Uh, uh, when this water agency was formed, there'd be, you know, we wouldn't have any process. We wouldn't have any potential to do anything. We wouldn't get these discharge permits and, and things that are necessary for, the, for, for us to operate. So, so with that, I'm open for explanation. But I, I do think that uh, uh, it's unfortunate that we didn't have the opportunity to attend the uh, supervisor's meeting. I, I would have liked to have uh, saw the whole show. Um, but I actually think that um, that we do need to take a stand one way or the other on this. Okay. Any uh, public comment on this yeah, item? Okay. Or, or go ahead. But I'm yeah. sorry. Before we before we go to public comment, we do we have one more up, one more comment. I just wanted to make one one observation, and that is that that uh, there is a provision for diversion out of uh, out of uh, a body of water that has a wild and scenic designation, and um, Jeff's absolutely right. The cost of the cost of of, uh, 
uh, doing business with regard to EIRs and stuff like that would be prohibitive, but that would only be after the millions of dollars that would be spent on protests put in a, a to, that, that would be filed by, by every drown, downstream water user to uh, uh, address putting in some sort of a, of a uh, an impoundment on the McCallum River if that was indeed the case. I mean, you know, I, I, don't, I don't believe that we could afford even to fight the protests to put in a, a, uh, a dam rather than, um, you know, just, just going on and doing it. And the other side of the coin too is, as I mentioned, I think this is really important. It does provide us some statewide protection to prevent other people from coming in and putting in dams. Because the big boys downstream have the money and they have the water reservations that we don't have. And, you know, I think that's a real consideration that has to be, uh, be taken into, in, into account. That's all. Okay, we're going to open this up now to public comment. Go, go, go ahead, sir. Good morning. Uh, my name is Pete Bell from Foothill Conservancy. I know the three of you sitting up there that know me very well and we have a long history together, there are two of you who don't. Over the years, Foothill Conservancy has been a pretty good ally of CCWD. We helped form the Upper McCullough River Watershed Authority. We made the IRWMP a valid working document. We helped get you the funding to do the West Point pipe replacement project. We've worked with you guys constructively for a long time. Because of that, we are extremely familiar with every proposed water project in Amador and Calaveras counties. The only proposed water project within the McCullough water system watershed as lower bear. It would not be affected by this at all. Okay, we're only talking about the North Fork main stem McCullough itself from Salt Springs to the headwaters of Pardee. Nothing in current planning documents even contemplates anything up there. If, in fact, you wanted storage in the upcountry, you're far better off looking for a cooperative agreement with PG&E to store it either in Salt Springs or in Tiger Creek. But as Bob has said, your most likely place of diversion is Pardee. And East Bay Mud is starting to find out that their demand is leveled off. They don't anticipate a whole lot more demand. So it is quite possible to negotiate something with East Bay Mud. Oh. This designation can be very valuable to Calaveras County. It's supported by over 140 small businesses within Amador and Calaveras County. It's supported by the Calaveras Visitors Bureau and by Destination Angels Camp. There's a lot of information out there that says just declaring a river wild and scenic doesn't necessarily increase the economy. But if a local organization such as the Visitors Bureau or Destination Angels Camp really go out and publicize it, it can dramatically increase tourist revenue. And all the predictions are that Amador and Calaveras counties are going to be really tourist dependent over the next foreseeable future. Uh, it's a real way to produce jobs for local people. There was supposed to be a pilot study for a commercial rafting program on the Electra Middle Bar range. It's not happening this year because of lack of water, but we'll probably start next year. Commercial rafting brings people to the area. They come here and they spend money. Can I ask you a question if you want to finish? Please, go ahead. You talk about you know, commercial rafting. That, that's, that exists. Uh, that will exist now without that designation. It will. So, it, so that's an unchanged economic benefit. Not necessarily so. 
Why? Because you can advertise river rafting on a wild and scenic river. It does make a difference. It draws marketing. more people. Marketing. It is It is a marketing tool. I've That's fine. I just want to call it yep. what it is. <laughs> uh, but it's way more than a marketing tool. Right. In the last 25 years, we've had to work on six dam proposals on the McCullamy River. All six were infeasible. Now, granted, some of them were the same dam over and over again. But it's incredibly time-consuming and energy-consuming to have to deal with these projects that, in the end, turn out to be totally infeasible anyway. Right, so you would like to see, one of the reasons you'd like to see the designation is because you're tired of looking at projects. Exactly. I would like to spend my time working with you guys to do productive things, well, like we're we doing in mobile. We build things, We build things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and there are things that need to be built. I don't deny that. Ask Don how much time we spent in the IRWMP process pushing, you've got to really get these projects in shape so we can get money for them. The and we West really Point project is We, we truly appreciate your, your cooperativeness on, on many things over here. I probably have known you the longest back when we formed the Upper McCombie Watershed Authority. And I remember right. in the very beginning meetings uh, uh, talking with you, you've always been a uh, reasonable, sensible fellow, and I appreciate that. So. Uh, well, so you know. we're trying to be reasonable, sensible now. And one thing you really need to keep in mind, this is not talking about federal wild and scenic. It's talking about state wild and scenic. And there's a huge difference between the two. Federal designation extends a quarter of a mile either side of the river. State designation extends to the mean high watermark. State designation does allow diversions on the river for the counties through which it flows. That means Amador and Calaveras. Okay. It won't let you build a dam, but you can put a diversion in there. You can put a diversion where there's already a dam. But which he's reading this one part, Pete. It says it bars, new dams, reservoirs, and diversions. It's the it's the very top line of page 10 of Wild Scenic McCombie. In intercepting. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> Read the next sentence. Allowing for diversions of domestic and, okay, in Dallas <clears throat> County, uh, if the resource secretary de determines that a need exists and the diversion will not affect the free-flowing conditions and the natural character of the river. So if, right. we, if we had to expand one of those by, you know, an acre foot. That does not necessarily affect the free-flowing character of the river. I know it doesn't necessarily, but, the, but it is another hurdle that we have to, it, it could be rejected based on that. And that's the, that's the part that makes me nervous is, is, you know, I'm talking about 50 years down the road. I don't want to have be associated with it, with somebody who, who you know what if the water supply in in, in those areas up there uh, fails or if the river goes you know dry or, or whatever happens there, there well, if the river goes things. if the river goes dry there's not any water to take anyway well, the only reason the river doesn't go dry is there's two dams above it <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree with you <laughs> the, I mean there's a reason why there at least three hand dug wells within 20 feet of the McCullamy River at Middle Bar. Yeah, I, we fully understand and appreciate that. But this is a river that is dearly loved by local people. We have almost 15,000 signatures on our supporters list. And it's right there, right now. What people want to see happen is the river stay the way it is. Okay. Because what you're asking them to trade off is sometime in the future, some vague maybe project that might happen that certainly will not benefit current residents. It would only be there to benefit people moving into the area.
I don't believe that. I don't think that's true at all. I think that they, you know, we're, we're getting to, we're getting to, with this drought, we don't know if this is long term, if this is the new uh, climate or not. I mean, up until a few years ago, I would have argued with you that I didn't believe in climate change. But the fact of the matter is, is we've got, you know, two foot snowpack right now. That's right. You know, and we've got, uh, we've got uh, a, a, a lake that's, you know, at about 33%. That, that we, you know, uh, we need some redundancy for. So uh, I think that the existing folks of, uh, of Calaveras County, I mean, Calaveras County is not going to grow faster than the 1% or 2% it, it ever has grown. Nothing's going to change that. So I think it's I more, much more likely that a future water project will enhance the existing folks who live here today. In the upcountry? Well, the upcountry is not the whole county. You know, I, I, un I understand that. <laughs> if you want to develop the west end of the county, which is the logical place to do it, then the logical point of diversion is to add a Part D reservoir. Mm -hmm. And if you need to do that, you should know from our history together, I'll be right there to help you figure out how to do it. We appreciate that. All right. You know, we're not asking you necessarily to decide to support this today. If you can't bring yourself to do that, then we would ask you, let's have a study session. Let's get you more detailed information. What, whatever your questions are, we will do our level best to answer them. Can I ask one more question, Pete? How did this, uh, whose idea was it to go to Wilds and City designation? Where did that come about? Was that a a state deal? Did the state come and say, hey, you know, we need to protect this river? And, or was no, it they didn't. It's been something that we have supported and we have pushed for 25 years. We have recently come to the realization that due to our current representative in Washington, federal designation is simply not going to happen. We've also, by going back and studying the state program and comparing it to the federal program, have come to realize the state program answers just about every concern that we've heard about the federal program. And we would be more than happy to spend whatever amount of time you guys want to take to bring you up to speed on just what it does, what it doesn't do, and how it can benefit Calaveras County. You know, Pete, I really appreciate all you've done with UMRA. You're a really good partner, and you guys are not extremists. The, what we have to, to look at in terms of is the future of water. I don't know if absolutely anything will change as far as CCWD is concerned for the next 50 years on the river. But for me personally to close that door, and if we do something that may close that door, then I, I can't be supportive of that. But if you can, if you can take all my, my fears and concerns and put them in a document that I can understand, I have no, no qualms with this concept. But I, I've got to look to the future of, of the residents of the county. That's my job. That's what I, I was elected that. to do. I understand that. And if you were to decide at any time that you want to impound your McCullumy 19,000 acre feet on the North Fork or the upper main stem, it would be the worst choice you could make. It would be a totally irresponsible choice for all kinds of reasons. I think it's for us. It's probably more like South Fork stuff, uh, potential. That's fine. This does not affect South Fork, does it? And that doesn't affect the Middle Fork. Doesn't affect Blue Creek. Doesn't affect Cold Creek. If, not if, at all. I, I know that we we need to have further discussion so that we can clarify that so that we're crystal clear because I'm not I'm not there yet. So if you can if you can get me to that point, then then I can I can be supportive. We would be happy to have those discussions with you whenever you like. Okay. You know my phone number. <laughs> yeah. Give me a call. <laughs> Thank um, you. Oh, Director Dean. In, <laughs> in responding to Don's comment about we need to look to the future, um, we also need to do it 
with as broad a vision as we possibly can. I've talked both at Aqua and at Mountain Counties about the importance of a water, port, a water storage portfolio, which includes, as Jeff pointed out, dredging. It includes groundwater recharge. It does include surface storage if necessary. It includes um, meadow restoration and uh, preservation of soils in a canopy forest. It includes just about everything that you can talk about that might somehow or another relate to storage. The difference is when you choose one item, such as surface storage, that has a tendency to kind of put blinders on and you don't look at anything else. The low hanging fruit is all the other things that I mentioned. Rem Scherzinger at NIT, the general manager up there, dredged uh, 13,000 cubic feet of sediment from one of their reservoirs this last year before they had to shut the system down. And uh, they did it for $189,000, which sounds like a lot of money, except it calculates out to about, to about $14 a, a cubic yard for, for removal. And uh, my guess is that with a little bit of effort, it could, it could be significantly less. And the advantage that that brings over storage, quite frankly, is it brings immediate storage to the area, not just, uh, not just talking about future storage. You know, here we are concerned about the drought. We're all, all concerned, oh my God, the, the sky is falling and all this <clears> kind of <throat> stuff. And basically what it boils down to is anything that we do today with streamlined permitting, engineering, willing, willing buyers and sellers, the whole nine yards, we're looking at 10 years before this project is even finished. And there are so many other things that we can do to address not only the immediate issue, but deal with it in the future, and we can do it for a lot less money. And that's my whole point. Be broad vision. Don't be narrow. <clears throat> okay, we're going to get back and uh, continue with uh, public comment. Marty, you have an uh, item? We're trying to get through public comment here on, the, on this item, uh, and, then, and then come back to the board. Go ahead. Good morning. Marty Crane, uh, Valley Springs. I am so excited. Thank you, Director Davidson, for bringing this to the public and having this conversation. I am thrilled to hear each and every one of you express that you are open to more information because, and before you make a decision on what you decide to do. Um, so this is very, very uh, encouraging to me. And I would uh, remind us all that if you were not able to attend the Board of Supervisors <coughs> meeting when this was discussed, it was filmed, it was on February 25th, it's easy to find and it might be a, uh, a good place to start as well. Um, I'd just like to say that uh, the dream of a permanently protected Mequalamie River is a reality that is close at hand and one that may be opposed by others who place a lesser value on all it has as a free-flowing river. Not protecting the Moog through wild and scenic designation will continue, as was stated earlier, to pit neighbor against neighbor, for years to come. And all that energy that is put there could be better put towards helping us figure out the solutions as we move forward on water issues that we're all concerned about. In my opinion, it's the right thing for the citizens of today and future generations. For those who live in urban and big city areas, the only way they can experience the beauty of nature and learn from the scenic lab um, that it truly is, is to visit the foothills and our free-flowing rivers. It's the right thing for the citizens of today and future generations, and a free-flowing river supports our local economy, as was also attested to through marketing and um, et cetera. Easing the concerns that we're hearing here today and others that may surface um, surrounding all these issues can be resolved through, like we're doing right now, collaborative conversations. Doing the right thing is not always easy, as we can see, um, but I'm sure that together we will find our way and hopefully we will be able to look back and say we did the right thing. Thank you and I'll be at the next conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on this item? Go, go ahead, sir. My name is Sean Seal. I'm a resident of Murphy's. I'm also a business owner. I own Sierra Nevada Adventure Company. We have a store in Arnold and we have another one in Murphy's, as well as one in Sonora. 
uh, I wanted to thank you for the job that you do. You provide an invaluable service to our community. Obviously, none of us would be able to live here if we didn't have uh, the services that you provide. I have lived here long enough to remember before uh, Maloney's was filled. And I also lived here before the North Fork project dewatered the upper stretches of, of the North Fork. So I've seen change. And I think the loss of some of the recreation that was available on those rivers is an economic loss to the county, especially the Stanislaus. When, when we lost the whitewater rafting industry that was vibrant in the Columbia, Angels Camp, Vallecito area, that industry moved to the Placerville, Coloma area. And it's become an economic giant in that community. And you know, when you add up, <clears throat> apparently they did a study after the whitewater industry moved to the American, and this was in the early 80s, and they determined that about $10 million a year in, in that period's money, $10 million per year was pumped directly through the rafting companies themselves not measuring all of the other money that the visitors spent inside that community. So when you add that up over 10, 20, 30 years, that's a lot of money that is going into that community that's not going into ours. So I don't think that we should minimize recreation as we try to monetize uh, um, natural res resources. I, I think that there's a correlation between um, wild and scenic status on the McCallamy and a Big Trees State Park uh, above Arnold. When we look at redwood forests, I think that we can uh, make a, a valid comparison between them and a free-flowing river. There's a big difference between a river and a reservoir uh, as far as um, how you can enjoy them. And a lot of money gets spent by people coming to Calaveras County to see redwood trees. And I think that we can make an argument that those people would also come to the uh, other side of the county to enjoy the McCollany, or, or, or already are. The, the, some of the discussion among you is about what, um, you know, what is wild and scenic and uh, how would it affect your jobs. And I think that it's important to not just miss the incredibly obvious. It, it, is, it is protection. That's the whole idea. That was the whole reason of making Big Trees State Park a protected area for the redwoods, because otherwise there were a lot of other uses that we could have put those redwoods to, but it would have permanently changed that resource and we'd never be able to go back and undo it just like we really can't undo Maloney's. <clears throat> I think as we try to monetize water we need to remember that there's always two ends of the equation. We can look at the water resource as money that can be generated and, and create cash flow. But I frankly think that California as a state's done a very poor job of looking at the other end of the equation which is the water that's wasted. Uh, you can create water by saving water, which, you know, in, in today's discussion was um, addressed in, um, in, in small part by the toilet program that you were talking about. I mean, I'll face it, a lot of this water is being used for flood irrigation. It's being sent to Southern California to fill swimming pools. It's irrigating golf courses. And I, I just don't know that there would ever be an <coughs> end to the water needed in this state. If so we're on the land of a five-minute limit. To Thank you. I didn't know that there was a five minute limit. Um, I, I, one question is, do, our, do the dams on the McCollamy ever spill? Uh, you know, when we talk about building more dams or building more water projects, how much of this water ultimately is being wasted? How much of it does end up going to a place like the Delta or the ocean where I guess you could say it's being wasted unless you, you know, are um, trying to enhance fisheries? And then, um, I, I do see an opportunity for you as, as um, uh, people that are help trying to help our community uh, from a public relations standpoint. Again, to, to just state the incredibly obvious, this is an emotional issue and the community is going to be watching. I think a lot of people probably applauded 
our um, Board of Supervisors for uniting on something. It is rare, really, in this county for our supervisors to agree on something, and they agreed on Wild and Scenic. So, you know, um, thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> you want to comment on this item? Go, go ahead. Catherine Evett, Foothill Conservancy. I apologize for Pete having to leave me as a pg and &E Land Stewardship Council meeting today. And I just want to say, you know, we're intimately acquainted with all the projects on the McCullough. We know the operation, the pg and &E project so well, they send us to give tours of it. I mean, we know month by month, you know, how, what is coming down the river, why, and help make those decisions. But I think what you're looking at here with Wild and Scenic is this is a quality of life issue. Quality of life is what brings people to Calaveras County, and it's what makes people stay in Calaveras County when they have better economic opportunities and better career opportunities elsewhere. I can certainly say that's true for me. I could have made a lot more money in a city, and instead I stayed up here all these years, and I've lived here nearly all my adult life. And the state wild and scenic designation is really a both and solution for you because it leaves your water rights intact and you have plenty of water from other sources to sustain future development and growth. You have water storage, seven out of 10 years in New Hogan that you're not using right now. McCulley doesn't have a lot of extra water on it. Just to answer uh, Mr. Seal's question, Salt Springs Reservoir does not spill or come <coughs> close to spilling 50% of the time now. And so it's not like a lot more storage on the McCulley is going to get you a lot more water. And so if you do, I would urge you to study this matter further, but if you do stand up for the Wild and Scenic designation, you'll be doing your job as public servants not only to look to the future of water for Calaveras County, which you do very diligently, but to look for their quality of life and the people that, who you represent. And you have the opportunity here to have a water supply in your future because you have abundant water supplies and we've even filed protests to help defend them in the past. And you have a really special river here, and you know, they're not making rivers anymore. And this is one that local people value very much, and it's part of why, I mean, Pete talked about being tired of fighting dams. Yeah, we're tired of fighting dams, but I can keep working on this issue because I know how many people support and love this river, and I hear from them all the time, and they want to protect it, and they are your constituents. Thank you. Catherine, uh, I want you to, to recognize that we're, we're after a win-win here. We, we would like to find that position uh, and that we can't accomplish anything without partners. And we see you guys as partners. And so we're, we're anxious to find that win-win. So if we can do it, we're all about it. Great, well, we, thank you, thank you. And we're, all, we're, you know, we're big believers in collaborative processes. We were the first group, environmental group in the Central Sierra Foothills to get involved in collaborations, start collaborations, have been working on them ever since. We have a very long relationship with pg and &E that's a collaborative relationship now that has improved the management of the project on the river. And so we're all for that, Don. And we think um, state wild and scenic designation could be your win-win, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> and I, I want to uh, uh, also comment, uh, and I, I'm very supportive of what Don just, just got finished saying. I, I grew up in the county, spent a lot of time at Box Beach, intertubing down that river. Uh, that's, that, that's, that swing, uh, swinging out of the tree across, uh, across the river. It's, uh, it's, I've been there hundreds, hundreds of times down that river and fishing, still fishing today. Um, I, I really appreciate uh, that, that position. <clears throat> I, I would like to see us table this this we uh, <clears throat> and talk about this and see exactly how this is going to affect um, our our uh, as stewards of our water um, in this county. I think that we that we we do have an obligation. Um, I just got this packet <clears throat> on this subject. I got a call yesterday. Just received a packet this morning, dated March March 10th, from the uh, Foothill Conservancy. And thank you very much for for all the information you have provided. I would like to uh, to gain a little more information on this on this topic, and a, and exactly I do recognize that there we are water rich it, here in Calaveras County. We do have three three rivers that that flow through this. We do have uh, uh, ideas of use of the water on the McQuallamy. However, it might be below the Highway 49, and we may not 49 Bridge, and we may not have much of an opportunity above it. I would like to explore 
those hear from staff on the on this subject and maybe have a a, a workshop or a future meeting uh, uh, addressing this um, and maybe asking for our support when we're a little more uh, educated on because uh, as, as stewards of of, of water and we have a we do have a responsibility and not and not just to the people who are living here now uh, to the people that are going to be living here in, in in 50 years and as director David is saying Davidson said it may not be many of us uh, many of us that, that are affected by the decision that we made today and and then again just supporting this this project by CCWD isn't the isn't the end all but we, we are we do want to make a responsible or I'd like to see us make a responsible intelligent uh, knowledgeable d decision and, and do that when we have those tools to to make this uh, decision or support this or, or not I got a couple of quick Go questions uh, as, uh, uh, are we being asked to uh, vote on anything at this point uh, if, if you're tabling it what are we tabling we're, we're, this is this isn't a possible action action item um, we, we could entertain a motion on this on this subject um, we're, we're tabling the I'd like to see us table the uh, option of uh, of whether or not we vote on support or yes, not at this time sure the other question I have is why is this happening now? Why not last year or five years ago or 20 years ago? What's the driving force behind this thing coming to the head now? What's well, the time I, frame? I agree. That was and, and that's, and I think with the, with the comments and the, and we could spend a lot of time on this today. Um, and I think with the, with the questions and the comments that uh, directors at both ends of this table have right now at this, this minute, I, I think that's a, a reason for looking into this, gaining some more information, going through our, our, the information we do have, and looking, uh, and looking to discuss this at a future What's agenda the item. What's for adoption of wild and scenic designation? Who makes the final decision? When, when is it going to be proposed to the state, if, if you will, Chris? State wild and scenic designation requires action by the state legislature and a you know affirmative action of both houses, agreement on a bill, and a signature from the governor. Uh, Calaveras County's resolution asks that your representatives in state government to introduce legislation. Other than that, you know how this is going to move forward. Nobody's really sure. As far as the timing of it, Mr. Dooley, we've been working on this different ways, different angles for 20 some years. We spent quite a bit of time fighting off the party expansion when that was done. We regrouped, we started looking at federal and state options and started working on the state alternative and we spent a good little bit of time trying to make sure it was something we liked because it never was our first choice. This is our compromise position. And so as far as it moving forward, we're not certain and you might want to talk to your board of supervisors about that. Well, I, I, I assume that you've, you've asked uh, Assemblyman Bigelow or... We have not. Uh, Pardon? We have not. When are you planning on doing that? We're going to let Calaveras do that. County do that. For You're asking the county to do it. The county has passed in their resolution, the language of their resolution asks Mr. Bigelow and Mr. Berryhill to introduce and pursue legislation. We do not know whether they will or won't, frankly. We don't know. And that's, that would be for the next legislative session. That wouldn't happen. It could be this year, depending. It, it's getting close on the calendar. As a practical matter, uh, Amador County has not taken an action, so um, that that means it's probably not going anywhere. Legislation. I thought that shut down. Friday. But oh, he's saying he's saying Amador County hasn't adopted. Oh, I realize that, but what I'm saying is that, that at the state level, I don't think they can do anything more. Just to Have they, has it been before the board? Uh, not recently. Can answer that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, and if I can't answer them, I'll let you know and I will get you answers. Amador County's Board of Supervisors hasn't looked at state designation. They did take a position in opposition to federal designation back in 2010. But that was federal designation. A lot of their concerns, a lot of the concerns of 
residents in Amador County who lived along the river had to do with the management plan that comes with federal designation that doesn't come with state designation. It had to do with the involvement of the U.S. Forest Service and BLM, which are not a factor in state designation. You know, and, and there's just, uh, uh, not to characterize anybody, but, you know, people have a certain reluctance to do anything that looks like another layer of federal government in their counties, and we understand that. We work a lot with federal agencies. We love state. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know, we know it's, uh, you know, we understand that too, Mr. Davidson. <laughs> we work with them all. <laughs> well, would you uh, support a federal adoption if it became an option that would be likely to occur? Well, we have supported it in the past. It's not what we're pursuing at the moment. We don't see it in the foreseeable future. I may retire if we get the state designation on the <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and Mr. Dooley, a lot of it's not up to us. You know, there, there are that tens of thousands of people who support this. And, uh, you know, the future's the future. We're looking at what we might do now. Well, you've been selling the point, at least from my interpretation, that, well, this is not a federal it's not. Uh, program and it doesn't come with all the restrictions that a federal program mm -hmm. would impose on it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I keep asking myself, uh, would you support a federal program to be adopted if that became a feasible uh, opportunity? I think it would require support from the counties to do that, whether we support it or not, frankly. And so if you didn't support it and Amador and Calaveras counties didn't support it, it would be a moot point for me to speculate about what would happen in the future. And I've gotten real good at not trying to guess what happens with members of Congress and the Congress because it's kind of futile. But, so, but you didn't answer my question, which is, would you support it with Foothill? The Foothill Conservancy in the past has supported it. Right now we're looking at the state. We're not looking at the federal. So, you know, we'd have to take it back to our board and say, all right, you know, if the opportunity for federal comes up, would we pursue it? I don't know. I can't answer that. But we have supported it in the past. We've been real clear about that. And, um, you know, not going to back off that. We have supported it in the past. Thank you. Okay. Director Dooley, maybe I can help also bring some clarity to that in that uh, this state designation came about after the federal designation uh, in the late 60s. And it was primarily orchestrated to protect uh, the North Coast rivers, uh, but provide some flexibility within the state law that the federal law didn't get, but still gave the protection so that the local interests could be protected and utilized when those North Coast rivers. So it, in fact, had a different kind of orientation from, from its origin. And so ultimately, it is less restrictive than the federal designation. Uh, but certainly, there are many groups in this county that would support a federal designation if it came up. OK, another question, uh, and I don't know what the answer would be, is uh, with all the stuff that's going on with water in California now, and the drought, and the uh, uh, projects and so forth, would the state be likely to consider anything that uh, takes the attention away from uh, the water and Bay Delta issues uh, and bond in the, uh, uh, in, at, in the state at this time until that gets resolved? <clears throat> that is a hard one to, to answer from this chair. Certainly, the state designation of wild and scenic or wild recreation, when they're supported by your populist in your local interest, county supervisors, uh, uh, businesses, and other officials, typically those get seen like motherhood and apple pie when they come through uh, at, that, at, at that point. Uh, this one's a long way from being there yet. Well, I, I just want you know, I brought, I, I wanted this to come before the board, and I'm glad we did, and I appreciate the discussion. And I think we all uh, learned a little bit here today. Um, I, I do, I don't think whether we uh, decide to take no stance uh, or take a stance either way uh, will derail anything, um, but I do think it's important that we do. And I, and I would hope that in the future when, when they're, uh, when the Conservancy is lobbying for these things, that they will go to the Water District or come to us uh, when, when they know they're significant, we would have significant issues. 
uh, I think it would have been a good place to start. Uh, the Board of Supervisors, you know, have no authority over the water in Calabarese County. Uh, uh, although I recognize that the governing body, they have no authority over the water. Uh, we do, and it's our responsibility, and it would have been better to work cooperatively, and, and we still can. Um, but uh, I would hope that we uh, would bring this to a, uh, you know, within 30 days or so, I know we got uh, other things to do. I don't see this being fast-tracked, uh, you know, going before the state uh, anytime soon, but I also don't want it to uh, languish. So, you know, if, right. if we want to have a, uh, I, I, I would love to have a staff presentation um, of how they perceive these impacts or potential impacts or, or um, lack of access for the future projects on the McCullough um, I would like to hear Larry's point of view on that and Mitch's and any other staff members that want to uh, chime in on uh, what it really <coughs> means to us. Because, you know, I think the board, we're, we're up here speculating, but I think we have staff members that uh, have a better understanding of the operation of the, of the river, and I'd like to hear them point of view. So, well, and, that's, and that's a point I was uh, I was making it earlier. I do I do agree that we would do, do and I want to give 60 days, uh, within the next 60 days, have this back on our agenda. We certainly can bring it back to your agenda, but I can tell you, based upon our review of conditions, provisions of law, it's clear that the district lacks a lot of information. Um, and our plans are, are a bit antiquated, and the methodologies were outmoded. Um, so the uh, ability to look at this and give you the kind of uh, detail that might be, you know, a professional-level presentation, I, I'm a, I'm, I want to caution at this point. Uh, certainly we can come back in a couple months, give you what we know, and then condition what we don't know. And if that meets the expectation, I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable with that. But um, we have a fair amount of information that has not been um, um, developed in a manner that I would bring in. So our core documents are cyclic, and uh, um, many of those key core documents um, are coming up for review in the next couple years. And so without having that kind of detailed review, we're going to be lacking. Um, but it's clearly evident that there's a, there's a great dialogue here to be had within the community and within the district itself. And we can see how the Board, Board of Supervisors, the Visitors Bureau, the Destination Angels Camp all have a economic uh, vested interest in this and in bringing people to the county and to the community and, and growing our, our, our county. Um, our, I see it's CCWD, our, our interest in, as, as stewards, uh, uh, of our water is, is a, a little bit a little bit different and I do and and thank you Mitch I do want to take a, a harder look at this uh, and uh, as a support of uh, director Davidson I think it's the that's the position we're going to take I want to move this thing forward we got one more comment from director Dean and well, only, we'll only that and I agree with everything that's been said I think we need more information but if we're going to talk about it from a water management perspective we're going to have to put it in the context of the Calaveras and the Stanislaus rivers because I think they're going to play into our over, overall water management uh, issues that we're going to be faced with in the future. And I think that, that if we see, if we, if we bifurcate this process, if we break it down and, and address each individual watershed separately, when we're, when we're talking about a water management issue, I, I think we're doing ourselves a disservice. And I think it has to be, be seen in the context of the future of, of water management in Calaveras County, which must include all three watersheds. Now we may not be able to do that and it may be that this is the beginning of a, a much longer discussion, but uh, I think everything has to be seen in that context. Okay, and with that, uh, th this is uh, gonna move, move on. With no, taking no action on item uh, 5D at this, at this point. Um, take five let's take five, five minute break. Uh, be back in five sharp. Right. <laughs> right. I made all my call. <laughs> you <did> all your <laughs> calls. <laughs> so, so. Well, it was. It was. Okay, we're uh, we're back in uh, back in session, and we're on item five under new business five e discussion action regarding amending the district's rules and regulations governing and furnishing of water and or wastewater services, Article 3, Section 21E, with addition of granting and accepting capacity transfers. Um, Jeff Myers says, looks like he's taken the issue. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, 
You did a very good job summarizing that. <laughs> what we're looking at here is, as you mentioned, is uh, amending 20, Article 3, Section 21E to add 21.